All right, so now I'm set up with my finishing brush. And you see how it's going to give me this softer pass over everything that still incorporates it. And then, of course, I could always use it to blend in, like I did with the, the pastel compositing. All right. All right. So let's stay, stay at about this level and keep painting, looking at the reference. And really try to have a directionality to the marks. Let's try a bigger brush because I'm zoomed out. And the hardest thing is just changing colors enough and trying to save enough so that Photoshop can keep up with me. Okay, so now on the forehead where it's really open here, this is where I'm really hoping this brush will help. So I want that smeared kind of open look. All right. Where it can still look spontaneous, but it doesn't just look so granulated. And as I get more finished, I might go to lower opacities, if necessary. Now, the only thing on top of this is my sketch layer, which is set on multiply. So you see, I can't hurt my sketch. That is always going to be safe. I don't want to be afraid of color, never. But also I can push a little bit more kind of nuance into these areas, even when they're bright. Kind of taking inspiration from this background behind. One thing I love to do with crayon in my traditional art using it with watercolor is just grinding the white wax crayon <laughs> and making just a waxy surface with which to work on top of because it makes everything kind of slip and slide in a way that I think is very pleasurable and pleasing. It's a lot of uh, integrity to the material that way. You can kind of see how it wants to work. Now, important to have your darkest darks, always. Whether they're a brown or a blue-black, kind of push those back and forth. And I want kind of a richness for them. I want color. That's why the purple suit Every once in a while, you want things that are somewhat unexpected as well.
I like the little spitting that this brush does at the edges. And I can always erase away from it if I if I need to. The trick is knowing kind of what to finish, what is like the level of finish you want, um, where it feels really considered and still spontaneous like a pastel drawing. Pastel drawings aren't supposed, supposed to take weeks to finish. They're supposed to be kind of done in a sitting. And though this is gone, this whole process has gone pretty fast, digital paintings are kind of famously, especially portraits, uh, easy to overwork. And that's something Toulouse-Lautrec, my inspiration here for this project, never fell into the trap of, of overworking. At least his most famous works were done fairly spontaneously. And you can really see all the, the happy confidence, the little accidents that happen that he, he uses and evolves into his mature work. That's what I'm going for. But when you use a material that's really asserts its own identity like this, either traditionally or trying to mimic it digitally, you also can fall into the trap of trying too hard to make it look representational and not really express your own artistic choices. So let's see. So, so far, these are all cosmetic kind of finishing touches, but they're giving it some life. And what's nice about being on its own layer is I can take the opacity and just kind of soften it a bit as I put it in. All right, what else do we need? By never letting myself zoom in to work, uh, I escape the trap of having one area that's just really detailed and overworked. Because in order to then finish it off, I'd have to bring everything up to that level. And if that's not something I'm interested in doing, I should just never zoom in. But at the same time, I zoomed in before I made this brush to kind of see the qualities I want in the final. And those qualities are like this rather than all just granulated individual pixels. So if I keep working this way, I know that the, the in-depth finish will be nice and strong. Even around the details like the eyes. I'm liking all these crazy colors I'm getting in his hair now. Give me permission to, to go bolder and not so soft in other places.
And just like in real painting, you want to let the brush do a lot of it for you. Customize it, so now we want to trust it. And we see it from a distance, we see it up close. We want to use that directionality. We want it to, to bridge the gaps we're missing. One way is to push it darker and then lighten it up. Remember, squinting is always helpful. And seeing, well, where are the real highlights? Where do I smear the white crayon a little bit? And the other beauty of having kind of a crayon approach digitally is no Crayola set is as big as all of the colors I, I get to color with. And though you can mix crayon, it does kind of resist itself being waxy. And so it is a lot like digital painting where little bits of the pure color will still come through. And that's why I wanted to start with that kind of granulated brush. So I have pixels of pure color always underneath all this sliding. If everything was kind of more soft and where all the colors kind of stain each other, then it's more like that watercolor one I did. It's just a different overall effect. All this stuff I'm doing is really kind of playing against my sketch too, which is nice, like the Toulouse Lautrec. So the sketch lines now don't seem so abrupt because it's the same kind of approach that's drawing over the top of things here in the finish. I think this is a brush I will use in the future. That's good. One reason I love digital art and like doing these little demos and recording them is because I love trying new techniques. And I think every visual artist that I've talked to about their process and about what's difficult, it's always, it's always difficult to start something new and there's always a slight fear there that you won't be able to do it. <laughs> you won't be able to do something you've already done. And I definitely feel that a lot of the time when I have breaks between projects and if I ever take the time to think about it, I worry. Am I able to do what I did last time? Do I remember how? And the videos show me how, but it's more about just having a trust in yourself. But my um, kind of clearest way of dealing with that, that uncertainty is to just always do something.